God hell, God bless you everybody. <clears throat> Getting my words all muddled up. Good evening, good evening. Chidima, yellow. I can see you here now. How are you? I saw you this afternoon. It's nice to see you, Nim. How is everybody? I'm tired of playing English songs. I'm playing Pomo culture. Hope you are enjoying it. Hello, Joke. Hello, Chidima. Hello, Roti. Hello, Nonye. Hello, Ola. Trust you're all doing well. Hello, Janice, my princess. Trust you're doing well. Janice, I'm expecting to hear from you all. Um, call me or send me a text. Inbox me after this, after this preaching. I got one or two questions for you. Hello Ngozi Zika. Hello Gabriela. Hello Isaac. Hello Fatma. Fatma, my sweetheart, how are you? Ezine. Ah, Yusuf. I haven't spoken to you for a while. How are things doing? You know what I mean. Nim, give me a text and let me know. Hello, Reverend Roti. Majako Dumi. Oh, we have two Rotis here tonight. One of them is Reverend Roti Majako Dumi. Oh, everybody, I want you to listen to her. Follow her on Facebook Live. She's a good woman of God. And she has followed us for a while. And um, it's kingdom first, you know. She's doing a very great job. Her name is Reverend Roti Majako Dumi. Hello, everybody. Trust you're all doing well. My eyes are still open and shining. Oh boy. Hello, Flora. Hello, Belinda. Oh, good. I will look in my inbox to see the message you sent me. It's better that you order from the list I showed you on Facebook because when you go to the website, some of the books have run out. But if you want to buy any book from me, choose it from the selection I made on the Facebook wall. I've got nine on ten books on Facebook wall. Choose from that selection. Hallelujah. Hello, Jane. Hello, Jacqueline. God bless everybody. So good to see you. Luyana, Yama Walters. Wow, we have quite a few people tonight. Ah, all the glory to God. Jared, my guy. Oh, now. Now, you wanted me to communicate with you. You had an issue. My brother, I haven't got time to call anybody. You know, I'm a very, very busy person. So can you do me a favor? Can you do me a favor, Jared E.K.? Nam, text me. Send me an inbox. Of, uh, oh, yeah, ma, from Australia. Yeah, my darling, I'm trying to organize a fire summit in Australia, you know. Let me know if you can help us there, please. <laughs> Jared E.K., so please inbox me, my darling. Because if you're waiting for me to call you, my brother, you might wait a long time. So inbox me. Let me know what the issue is. Give me a heads up and then I can communicate with you some more. God bless you, Maris. Yeah, my Walters. I said, can you help us arrange a fire summit there? You're saying, wow, can't wait. I need people to help me organize it there first. <laughs> Before I go all the way to Australia. Uh, my sister. Ah, hello Rosie. Good to see you. Wherever you are, I bid you welcome. You have come for a very special session tonight. Um, I know that God is going to use this session to bless you enormously. 
the topic we are handling tonight is very unusual all of us without exception who have made a point of being here tonight have in one way shape or form fallen victim to the scourge of enemies that target our clothes and so when we join the session tonight we're joining it with an idea of what we don't want in our lives we don't want to be tampered with anymore we don't want to be destroyed by our clothing anymore because anybody looking to destroy you we seek to do it physically if they cannot get the physical you they conjure you they use your picture they use your image or they use something that you have um, touched hallelujah they use something that you have touched they use um, a clothing you've worn or they can even use dust from under your feet so a lot can happen when people want to tap into your essence and that's the whole idea when they when they mess about with your clothes they tap into your essence before I divulge any more details we have protocol to observe tonight wherever you are begin to give God glory begin to give God praise hallelujah begin to give God glory begin to give God praise as you welcome in the personality of the Godhead it is time to say good evening God the Father good evening God the Son good evening God the Holy Spirit so wherever you are in whatsoever language you can do it in I actually want you to greet God in your various languages I like it when people do that because it personalizes the experience once more at a level that is so hard to replicate you know when you bless God in your language truly it puts you in a position of intimacy hallelujah so I want you in whatever language you speak if it's only English you know fine use English and when you give us the name of God in your language what I would also like you to do is to be able to translate that into English and let us know hallelujah so without further ado on your mark get set go start to announce the beautiful names of God in your language or in the English language our God is just simply too much our God is without equal our God it is that reigns he reigns yesterday he reigns he reigns forevermore celebrate this Jesus because he is nobody's mate nobody's his mate our God is just simply too much our God is a super God our God is a great God our God exists to make us happy our God exists to celebrate us as we pray tonight where they've tampered with your garments of clothing they tamper with it no more the voice of deliverance will call you out tonight the forces of tribulation will meet their waterloo Give God the glory. Call him beautiful names. Come on. Who is this? Yvonne Garlo Cooper. I said give God beautiful names. You say you are watching. I know you are watching now. Everybody here begin to give God glory. Begin to give God praise. As you pray tonight, victory is sure. There shall be wonderful changes made manifest in your lives. Testimonies will fall upon testimonies in your life. You'll become a magnet of good news. Hallelujah. Power will change hands. Problems shall fade away. Your Jericho wall shall collapse. Hallelujah. Jockey, that's a beautiful name. What is it in English, my darling? As you celebrate Jesus, as you give him beautiful names, your victory will be celebrated. You will dominate. Hallelujah. Who is this God that we are praising? He's the one that backed Moses in the battle royale with Pharaoh. He is the coat of many colors of Joseph. He is the sword of Joshua. He was the sword of David who fought 66 battles and never lost any. Our God is the faith of Abraham, the wisdom of Solomon, the womb of Hannah. Hallelujah. He is the Lord of the dance, the favor of Joseph. The Lord our banner. Diana, I think you're in love. You say my love, Jesus. Of course. God of the poor, absolutely. 
Celebrate When you remember him Then your heart takes courage When you remember him You know that you are not alone in this battle When you remember him You know that the devil You've not been handed over to the devil When you remember him You immediately know that Ah God is good all the time He's the invisible God Emma says, Mwari Mwari Jehovah Vashmiza. I wonder what that is, my darling. I like it. My one and only first love. That's it. God of fire, God of thunder, God of water, the ancient of days, the defender of the defenseless, the companion of the single, the husband of the widow, the wife of the widower, the God who is ever present in all situations. Tonight is a very special night. We are praying specifically for deliverance. It's a deliverance night. Deliverance upon our items of clothing. When we talk about items of clothing and garments, we talk about our headgear. We're talking of our tops, our blouses, our skirts. We are talking of our dresses. We are talking of our shawls. We are talking of anything we put on our body to adorn ourselves. That's what we are talking about. The deliverance tonight is a deep deliverance. You are going to hear quite a few things. Celebrate Jesus who is the strength of Samson. Our God who is the eyes of Elisha. Our God who is the veiler of the patriarchal generals. He is the bread, the vine, the wine. He's the God of a new song, God of a great song, God of a greater tomorrow. He has circumferenced us. The devil does not, cannot have a field day over us. Celebrate Jesus, the unchangeable God, the God that protects his children when we do not know, the mighty man in battle. This is the hour where we begin to engage the blood of Jesus. Begin to drink the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is a scarlet thread. That runs through the Bible. It's a game changer. It's the blood of exemption, the zenith of all power, the, the counselor, nullifier of the intents of the devils. It's a special commodity that never runs dry. It's always in vogue. The blood of Jesus lifts us up. Speak at better things than the blood of Abel. Alame Germa, the good shepherd. I like that, Joker. Thank you, my darling. Celebrate this God whose blood makes new, whose blood lifts up, whose blood writes us back in. No matter how feel, how despondent you feel, no matter how hard done by, no matter how you think you are billows tossed and tempest tossed, the blood of Jesus is more than enough to cushion you. From the blows of your father's house, it brings you up, bears you out. It raises you, it energizes you. There's no other rule, no control, no authority, no power that can claim to be as powerful as the blood of Jesus. It's the blood of exemption. Celebrate Jesus. The God will call one time, he answers seven times. The blood of Jesus is an offensive weapon, it's a defensive weapon. Begin to drink it, begin to sprinkle it, deploy it right now. Plead it! Enforce it. Oh, my dear good boy, uncle, absolutely. He breaks iron and just calls it the mere matchstick. Celebrate this Jesus. Begin to drink the blood of Jesus. Begin to saturate yourself in his power. Begin to ascribe greatness to God. Begin to give God glory. Begin to give God praise. Begin to salute this Jesus. Begin to salute this Jesus. He's just simply too much. He's the one that can arrest our plague. He's the one that can stop our fear. Merci, Jésus. Thank you, Jesus. Merci, Jésus. Salute this Jesus. He's just too much. Plead his blood. Cover yourself with him. As you pray, your tongue is mantled in power. As you pray, your tongue is wrapped in fire. As you pray, you are mantled by the blood of Jesus. As you pray, all of creation can hear you. 
As you pray, all of creation takes instruction from you. Salute Jesus for all that he has done for you. God most favorable. Only my gem, only covenant keeping God. Jokel! Oh, that's why bow long, why she my gem, whoa. Chong bummy, bye, bye, bye. Oh, that's it, bow long, she my gem, whoa. Chong bummy. I've tried to call you in the daytime, I couldn't get you. That's your message. Our God jealously guards us. He does not allow us to become subject to the devil's wiles. He does not allow us to be contaminated by the woes of our father's house. Our God will not hand us over to the powers of hell. Our God is our life. Our God is true. Our God is mighty. Our God is strong. Hallelujah. As you pray this particular prayer tonight, you shall be rebranded. You shall be refashioned. You shall be redecorated. You shall be restored. You are unstoppably expanded. As you pray, devil will take shame back to hellfire. Hallelujah. As you pray, instead of wood, God will give you good. As you pray, instead of destitution, God will give you diamond. As you pray, instead of dust, God will give you gold. Begin to cover yourself with the blood of Jesus. Cover this hour with the blood of Jesus. Cover this flower with the blood of Jesus. No matter the territory, how seemingly wonderful it is, wherever it is you find yourself praying, I want you to dedicate wherever you are to the blood of Jesus. Come on. Dedicate wherever you are to the blood of Jesus. Dedicate it so that no intercepting power shall hold sway over you. Dedicate it to the blood of Jesus so that spirit of death and lose cannot destroy you. Dedicate the area where you are praying right now to the blood of Jesus so that the spirit of get and go, get and lose, handle and disappear, handle and leave shall not be your portion. Hallelujah. The only voice authorized to speak tonight is the voice of the blood of Jesus and he shall speak on your behalf and my behalf. As you pray tonight, there will be a lifting, a changing. Power will change hands. You have all come to this session because in one way, shape or form, you know that once upon a time, something happened. Or some of you may, as a result of what you hear today, become better, in, uh, better informed about what happened to that garment of yours that you lost all so many years ago. You thought was an innocent loss all of a sudden. You now know why you lost it. This is an evening of revelation. From the beginning of my words to the end of my words, the rema of God to take preeminence and take control. Hallelujah. The book of Psalm 1022 says, Hide not thy face from me in the day of trouble, in the day when I'm in trouble. Incline thy ear in unto me in the day when I call, answer me speedily. I want you to open your mouth and ask God to hear you as you pray tonight. Ask God to behold you, to see you among the multitude who have come here from Australia, from California, who have come here from New Jersey, from New York, from America, from France, from Sweden, from Nigeria, from Ghana, wherever it is people have come from, the bottom line is, I need you to know there's a multitude of us here. And I want you to have a private word with God. Ask him not to hide his safe self away from you tonight as you pray. Hallelujah. Hide not your face from me in the day when I'm in trouble. Hide not your face away from me when I'm not in trouble. Say, my father, my Jesus, do not hide yourself away from me. Do not hide yourself away from me. You know, our, 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 the standing scripture to 2 Corinthians 9, 8 also says this. It says, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That ye always having all for sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. As you pray tonight, you shall abound to every good work. You shall not ab you shall not abound to the works of darkness. You shall not abound to the works of your father's house. I want you to come before God and begin to cry for mercy. Some of you were part of the session that I held this morning, and you remember you cried for mercy in that hour. You see, no session is complete without us coming before God. Job did it every time. 
came before God, killed an animal, atoned for sins he knew of and sins he did not know, atoned of on behalf of himself and his family. I want you right now on behalf of yourself, your destiny, your family, come before the throne of grace. Ask God to forgive you. Forgive you of sins of the mind, the body, the soul, of the spirit. Ask the spirit of the living God to take control in this hour. Say, spirit of the living God, as I pray tonight, I don't want to pray like a bastard. I don't want to pray amiss. Say, help me, oh God. Help me to pray well. Say, help me, oh Jesus. Help me to pray well. I do not want to pray amiss, oh Jesus. Help me. Holy Spirit, I cannot do it by myself. I need you to help me. By your mercy, O oh God, Lord of mercy and compassion, look with pity upon me. Father, let me call thee Father, till thy child returns to thee. Jesus, Lord, I ask for mercy. Let me not employ in vain. All my sins, I now detest them. Never will I sin again. As you pray tonight, you will receive empowerment for speedy breakthroughs. Hallelujah. As you pray tonight, whoever ever wants to waste your time on earth, that power shall be wasted by the fire of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. You're welcome once again. Tonight, you have brought quality repentance before God. Our God is a good God, is a great God. He has heard you. There's a certain song I know, and the way that goes is that it says, Oh yes, he answers prayer. Oh yes, he answers prayer. The God I serve, he answers prayer. Only Jesus answers prayer. Alpha and Omega, he answers prayer. Jehovah Jireh, he answers prayer. The God I serve, he will answer your prayers. Only Jesus answers prayer. Our Jesus is poised to answer our prayers tonight. Our topic, my brothers and my sisters, this morning we dealt with the topic of my father, my father, deliver my children. We brought our children, the born and the unborn, the toddlers, the twinnies and the teenagers before God. This hour, the assignment is different. This hour, this evening, we have come before God seeking the face of God for deliverance concerning our clothing what clothing your hats your bags your shoes your accessories your blouses your skirts your wrappers your quilly your gillies whatever it is you wear on your body why are they important clothing is key clothing is key when you wear a garment of clothing people will immediately read you stereotype you when you wear a garment of clothing people will envy you or they will hate you people ascribe to, to, to be you when they see you in your full regalia I'm operating from the United Kingdom and in the House of Lords which is the highest like the House of Senate in this country the, the American equivalent is the House of Senate when you see the lords dressed up in their regalias, it's quite a spectacular sight. And those that see them dressed in their regalias immediately want to be them. So people can see the way that you are dressed and ascribe to be you. They want to be just like you. Hallelujah. It's not a very, it's not a bad thing when people want to be like us, you know. Because it means they can see something good in us and they want to mimic it. Whilst I don't support the notion of evil twinning, I give God glory because as a result of how you look, how I look, people ascribe to be us. Let's not take it for granted. There are some people who nobody ascribes to be like them. If that is you today, receive the anointing that people will yearn to be like you in the name of Jesus. You will not be spoiled before those who should help you. Hallelujah. The topic is my father, my father, deliver my garment. I have so much to say tonight. I hope you're ready. The way you dress will make people love you. The way you dress make people, they can hate you or be repelled away from you. 
The way you dress make people honor you or dignify you. The way that you dress will tell people about you before you open your mouth. There's the notion of verbal cues of communication and non-verbal cues of communication. How you dress, which is why when you go for interviews, they tell you to dress with modesty, to dress with decorum, to dress as is fitting. Hallelujah. Clothing is key. Even the madman. A doctor wears clothes. A police officer wears clothes. A hairstylist wears clothes. A butcher wears clothes. A fishmonger wears clothes. The madman on the street wears clothes. I remember years ago in Lagos. There was a madman in the area we lived in. They called him London Taylor. London Taylor because you know when you see mad people in Nigeria not like the mad ones we have in England in England people will wear suits and tie and not look mad but they are mad it's until you, until you talk to somebody you don't quite know in this country everybody is so nicely dressed but back in Nigeria when you mad when you colo we know so this mad man in my area was called London Taylor can you imagine the man, I don't know whether he had been to London before. Don't even know whether he's still alive. But they used to call him London Taylor. Because he would wear all these tear, tear, nyama, nyama, dirty, dirty garments. Red here, pink here, dirty here, dread. I've never seen a dread, a madman with combed hair in Nigeria. It's in this country, you see them with long hair. Long hair, nice hair. Buffon, bun, dressed up. Hallelujah. God bless you, Elijah. So in Nigeria, they used to call that madman London Taylor. And I used to wonder, why are they calling him London Taylor? Did he live in London or is he a tailor? For where they called him London Taylor to mock how he was dressing. May you never be mocked in Jesus' name. May the way that you dress or the way that I dress not give rise to us be mocked in Jesus' name. The professional, a doctor, a dentist, an optometrist, IT consultant, a derivative, derivative trader in the city, a waiter, waitress, a cook, a chef, mechanic. All of these people, they wear specific uniforms, specific clothes. Hallelujah. The beautiful wear clothes, the ugly wear clothes, the blind wear clothes, the deaf, dumb and lame wear clothes. No matter when if you like have hunchback, you will wear clothes. Clothing very quickly gives people a snapshot perception of you. Hallelujah. The humiliated wear clothes. The celebrated wear clothes. The damned wear clothes. The condemned wear clothes. Hallelujah. Prisoners wear clothes. Those going before firing squad wear clothes. Two prisoners were put in death, put to, uh, put to death last week in America. I think the justification in that uh, particular state was that they had to put them to death quickly before the 30th of April because after the 30th of April, you're not allowed to kill them by little injections anymore. So they very quickly killed these guys last week and the guys they were killing had on uniform. Terrorists have uniform. Hallelujah. Some of you dream and in the dream you see somebody that looks like you. It's a familiar spirit. They operate by the familiar. They look like you, but they are not you. They are dressed like you, but they are not you. Did you guys see the testimony that was put up on my page last week? There was a spirit that was impersonating to be me. Went to deceive one of the young lionesses that we have in the house. She recognized it wasn't me and she, and she dealt with the familiar spirit to the glory of God. Familiar spirits are wicked. They can, they can mimic you, morph you, copy and paste you, template you. Say any power assigned to template me, die by fire. Say by the blood of Jesus, I'm uncopyable. Say nobody shall copy my essence. Nobody shall copy my form. 
Nobody shall copy my shape. Nobody shall copy what I look. Nobody shall copy my essence. When they copy you, they can damage you. When they copy you, they can, they can claim to be you in the spirit. When they copy you, then they can stand in your stead in the spirit. When they copy you, they can intercept things. Say in the name of Jesus, my portion is not to be exploited. It's not to, it's not to be tampered with. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We have a number of prayers to pray today. I, I just want to break this preaching down a little more. Years ago, in Mountain of Fire, Finchley, where I got born again, there was a sister called Sister Alice Hathaway of blessed memory. Now she's now dead. She went to Nigeria. She washed her clothes, put the pant and bra outside. After putting the pant and bra outside, she came out. She didn't see them again. Where is my pants? Where is my bra? They looked for it. They couldn't find it. I think the way the story goes is that the letter found the clothes. And she made the mistake of wearing them after she found them. When she came back from Nigeria in that particular trip, she had breast cancer. The pants she wore, married woman, she started decaying from down there. Because unbeknown to her, a child of the devil took her clothes from the client. Took it to the coven and planted satanic seedlings. The seedling of cancer and vaginal decay was planted. That woman suffered before she died. Some of you are here watching me. You've left clothes on the line before. You have spread clothes before. You've gone away, made a cup of tea. You're eating a biscuit or chewing gum. Come back. You can't find your clothes again. What happened to your clothes? Clothes, they work, huh? It's not as if it's the wind that... Share the video. It's not as if it's the wind that carried the clothes. What happened? If you are here and you have worn contaminated articles of clothing by mistake... By the anointing upon my life. In the name of Jesus. I deny that contamination. Any further incursion into your life. In the name of Jesus. Before we started this prayer. You prayed with me. You stand. That's why it's good to come early. I said all of you. Drink the blood of Jesus. Laminate yourself in the blood of Jesus. Because as you were doing that. You were building up the barrier of the blood of Jesus around you, making sure you're not available to the enemy shenanigans, making sure you're not available to the uh, to the to the, to, the, to the, that accursed thing planted inside your garment. Your garment can carry your essence. There was a young girl, Dr. D.K. Olukoya, spoke about. She used to sing all, all, all the time. Delish power, delish power, delish power in the blood of Jesus. She couldn't even sing the song properly. The song, you know, there is power, there is power, there is power in the blood of Jesus. Next door to their house in Nigeria was a native doctor. One day, her mother had washed her pant, put the pant outside, the wind came, Carry the pant, little girl's pant, into the next door. As soon as her pant landed in the compound on the native doctor, native doctor was paralyzed, could not do juju again, could not, could not, could, could not, could not, could not focus. All of his juju scattered, all of his materials. All the nonsensicals in the shrine was paralyzed, couldn't walk. So he was now consulting and consulting his oracle. Say, what is happening? What is happening? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? And the power has told him, is that pant, that wind blew inside your house. Ah. He went and looked at his dead pant. As he went to touch the pant, fire came out from the pant. He couldn't touch it. 
So he was there contemplating, saying, ah, what type, what type of power is inside there? What type of thing is this? The young girl came from her house next door and came and took her pant. As she was taking her pant, native doctor said, no, 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 don't, don't, don't touch it, don't touch it, don't touch it. That thing is dangerous. But she, she, she took it. It was her pant. There was the blood of Jesus inside. If she was not immune to the blood of Jesus. She took it. It did not harm her. Let's thank God for the blood of Jesus that separates us away from being damaged. The blood of Jesus that separates us away from being damaged. Years ago, MFM Watford, there was a girl called Toru. I will mention my name because this one, this is a story that happened to me. We were all young girls. We had been going to church. An acquaintance, not even a friend, an acquaintance, somebody who just happened to go to the same church. So she said to me, oh, Sister Sandra, I was sister then, I wasn't pastor. She said, oh, I've got a beautiful material skirt. Oh, she said, oh, because she had big hips. And the hips I was looking at wasn't exactly signboard. Going out, huh? But she gave the excuse that her hips were big and the skirt couldn't fit her. Oh, she wanted to give me the skirt. I said, oh, okay. I mean, there was nothing to wear around that sort of clothes. Before you give clothes to somebody, you must be close with the person. But we were all young girls and you don't want to cause offense by saying, no, I don't want that skirt, you know? So I said, yeah, yeah, bring it, bring it. So she duly brought it to church after a few weeks. Gave me the cloth. Oh, do you call? Good to see you, my darling. I'm so happy you're here. I took it, put it in my car, took it home. I did not wear the skirt. Really, God has been looking after me for a long time. I didn't wear the skirt. But what I did was, I now called Toro. The next week, a few days later, to say thank you. I called her on the phone. She carried her phone. I said, oh, Toro, it's Sandra. Oh, hello, hello. Oh, she'll come back. She'll come back. She'll come back. She'll come back. She's coming. She's busy. Bam. Uh -uh. And I'm thinking, why is she dropping the phone like that? What's, what's... Quickly, Holy Spirit said ministering. I said, wait, 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 wait. I said, no, I'm not, I'm not a bastard. Oh, yami, yami, emi o shomali. I'm not a bastard. I won't watch you agree. When you give me something, I have to say thank you. So I called Toru. By then, Holy Spirit had broken down the fact that she, I called her again the second time. Oh, oh yeah, I'm coming. Hey, put the phone down. I said, no, this one is not a mistake anymore. This girl, this girl is running from me. So what I did was, um, I used another phone number. I called her. As soon as she picked up, this was like a week after I tried her and she was dropping the phone the second time. I called her and I said, Oh, Toro, I know you're very busy, but hear me. I said, My darling, we are not even very close friends, but you gave me this. If you see the Ankara, eh? Like this, like this, shining, red, pink, fanta. Who don't like better thing? I liked it, but I didn't wait. I said, this young friendship of hers, you gave me the Ankara. I said, God will bless you immensely. I said, please, but so you know, I'm very grateful. I say, that material is so beautiful. I pray for you. I said, my dear Toro, that God would take that material you gave me, multiply it by one billion, and give it back to you in the name of Jesus. My brothers and my sisters, do you know what she said? She said, Amen. No button. Okpari. That was all I needed her to say. Because I had done my back to send that prayer. Well, well. So as soon as she said, Amen. Oh, fully be. That was it. What if I did not have the Holy Spirit? 
what would have happened to me? And I've seen Toro once or twice since then. She would see me and she would say hello very quickly. She didn't like to linger around me. But I'm so happy I never wore that skirt. Some of you here have worn what you should not wear. Some of you have taken programmed items. My goodness, somebody is joining us online. What a beautiful big baby. Whose photograph is this? Somebody sent me a text with a big baby on it. What a beautiful child. Oh, I must find out who that is. So the question you must ask, clothing, they can make or break you. The question you need to ask is, what are you trying to accomplish by what you have chosen to wear? What are you trying to accomplish? What are you trying to say? Are you trying to sell markets? Are you telling people you're available? You day market. Are you telling people popular way with how you are putting on how you're dressed? Do people know that particular body part is 20 naira and that one 50 naira? It's 100, ay, ay, 10 naira. Is that what you're telling people by what you're wearing? If that is it, there's a problem. There's a problem. Does your clothing illustrate that you the fact you've surrendered to God, that you have you have a commitment to holiness? Does it? These are questions you need to ask yourself to understand your intention when you when you when you when you wear clothes. The third question is you must ask let's go let's, Romans 12 11. Romans 12, 11, does your clothing illustrate surrender, that you surrender to God? Romans 12, 11 says, therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. That is your true and proper worship. So, your articles of clothing, you are worshipping God via your clothing. Ask yourself, have you only focused on your heart or on your, or on your wardrobe? Have you focused on, on your heart or your wardrobe? It is better to dress and focus on the heart than focus on wardrobe. Yes, looking good is good business, but by the time somebody has a red heart, red shoe, red, red nail, red hair, red, red, red mouth, red, red eye, Red lip, red fancha. There's a problem, oh. Your focus is not on your heart, it's on your wardrobe in that instance. Change. You ask yourself whether you're making clothing choices that are consistent. You're claiming to be a new creature. All things are passed away. You have become new. You're telling people you're transformed, but your clothing is still showing the condition you were in before you met Jesus. Vanity upon vanity, ask yourself questions. When you dress, you must ask if you are dressing with dignity and strength in mind. There's a way you can dress, you look weak. Last week, I saw somebody with spaghetti straps, breast hanging out, find everything just bagarying. You look weak. You look weak. When you dress, are you dressing to be put together or are they looking at you and you are, you are looking like they should call border, border patrol because everything is threatening. When you dress, you ask yourself whether you are practicing modesty and discretion with what you are wearing. Oh, hello, IK. Good evening, my dear. Good to see you, sir. Are your clothing choices bringing glory to God? There's a particular denomination. I won't mention it. Some of you may know it, as I say it, but I'm not mentioning it. The women in that denomination are notorious for not wearing pants. They won't wear pants and then, and no, no, they will no, do they like wearing bra? You know? I'll never forget one prophetess from that church describing how she wears, she makes sure she wears lace. And then she makes sure the kind of bra she selects to wear under the lace is hella. Prophetess, oh, hellele. 
Helele. So if a prophetess can be did the, thinking of wearing brazier from a gentle provocateur, eh, with quarter cup, on that a transparent lace, she's not dressing with decorum in mind. She's not dressing with dignity in mind. She's telling everybody, this one is 20 Naira, this one is 10 Naira, this one is Pokulu Uwe. That's what she's saying. Pure and simple. In that church, when you go, the women are notorious, they, they don't wear pants. They can wear underwear, you know, like uh, shimmy, but no pants, no bra. So that when they clap, everything is just jumping. Everything is jumping. Church, oh! Church. It's not the church. It calls itself a church, but in the eyes of God, it's not a church. You as a woman, you dress, you know, you know the church you're going to, you know, you don't clap like Roman Catholics. You know, you, you, you believe in African clapping and then you decide not, you would no pant, no bra. Everything is shaking. No wonder people from that type of Christianity, that church, the men end up with four wives, seven wives and legitimize it. They say there's nothing wrong with it. If you are going to that kind of church, you never find church, oh. You never find church. Inbox me, and I will gladly tell you where to root yourself. Find a mountain of fire. Hallelujah. How should a Christian woman dress? How should a Christian man dress? You know, you need to realize that your physical beauty is symbolic of the beauty of the church. Yeah? <laughs> Gabriela, absolutely. You don't shake like jello. Shake here, shake. You're confusing people. Confusing people. People will tell you in the church, oh, that they're, that they're, that they're entering the spirit. How would they enter the spirit after seeing what you're shaking? How would they enter the spirit? A spirit of santo. How should you dress as a Christian? You need to dress knowing that your physical beauty is a reflection of the spiritual beauty of the church. Dress to match. Not purple trouser, yellow top. We are preaching, oh. We are preaching. This is how this weekend is going to be. Raw. Distraction. Absolutely, Gabriela. Instead of the man of God to now read the Bible from Genesis, man of God will tell you to open the book, the book, the, the book of uh, out of confusion. <laughs> Because somebody has finished shaking like jello in front of him. Oh, it is well. How should a Christian man or woman dress? You should dress appropriately for the occasion. Recently, Juanita Bynum uh, had a go, and I believe she was right, at people that call themselves prophetesses, daughters of the prophet, sons of the prophet, and you're, you're wearing a shimmy strappy spaghetti strap you're wearing it on national television felix god will locate you tonight and locate your wife my darling you should dress in clothing that is becoming of your sex and gender a man has no business wearing skirt a woman should not go and carry a uh, 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 mechanics uniform we 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 wear those 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 factory boots. You know the one I'm talking about. You dress appropriately for gender. You should dress. Don't be lazy with your appearance. This is all how you should dress. This is advice on that. Don't hide your beauty from people because they can't control themselves. Don't hide your beauty. Doesn't mean say you should dress like an Ele How one of those Muslim cover 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 cover. Don't, don't hide yourself does not mean to say you need to dress and then quarter bra, show everything. You dress with the decorum. People will read you by how you dress. People will try to understand the psychology of you by how you dress. People will seek to address you by how you dress. By how a woman dresses, a single woman can get called madam. Do you know what I mean? And by how she dresses, a married woman who was misdressed can be called sissy, auntie. 
not madam anymore. So we need to give some thought into what we wear. The living wear clothing, the dead wear clothing, the mad wear clothing, the professional, the unprofessional. Mechanics wear, the dead, even the dead wear clothes, grave clothes. Say I reject any grave clothes assigned against me. Say with fire of God, consume any grave clothes on my person. Come on. Fire of God, consume every grave clothes on my person. Consume every grave clothes. Fire of God, consume every grave clothes upon my person. Fire of God, consume every grave clothes upon my person. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. A second example I have when I first started Mountain of Fire. They believe in uh, dressing with decorum. They believe in covering this and covering that. And I was keen. I didn't want to be seen as deviating from Mountain of Fire precepts. You know, how we dress in Mountain of Fire is we dress Mary Amaka. You know? You know what Mary Amaka means? You cover everything. So I really wanted to comply. So I found a woman, and then I used to go to the Emirates quite a bit. So I used to like all these long Arabian jalabis. I used to love them. So what happened was that I got, um, there was a woman in East London selling all those jalabis. I called her, she asked me to come and pick some up. I went to her house, there were quite a selection. So I picked out the ones I wanted, bought it, paid for it, and left. I came back home that night. I slept. As I slept, I saw her in the dream. I had lots of rice and lots of green, big vegetables in the dream. But surprisingly, I saw the woman that I bought something from that day. Her hands were like this in the dream. And she was ordering me to give her the rice, my own rice. And in the dream, I was giving her rice. She was taking the rice, she was taking the vegetable. I woke up, I said, whoa, what just went on? And the translation of the dream is like this. That she had, through that purchase I made from her that evening, there had been a spiritual transaction effected. So she now came to collect from me spiritually my blessings. And what transpired is that the woman, she used to do a henna for people, makeup for people, all sorts, in addition to selling dresses. So what happened was that she had been caging people who went to her to buy clothes. I didn't know. I didn't know. Sometimes I can't even understand the anointing God gave me because God likes to use the anointing upon my life to expose people. Honestly, people will keep doing things, but when it comes to Sandra, exposure. My anointing is the anointing of exposure. So that woman, she had been caging people. I woke up and I said, what? I carried my bottle of oil. I called my spiritual fathers. I called every other pastor I know. They started praying and canceling whatever she had done. I carried my bottle of oil. I looked for her house in East London. Went to her neighborhood. I did the wall of Jericho walk. Of her house, her street making pronouncement, cancelling whatever she did, firing, but collecting my portion. Learn, oh, learn. Because you never know when you're going to have to do this. Pray, cancel, bound, everything. Plus the one they taught me, plus the one they didn't teach me, plus the one Holy Ghost taught me. As soon as I started looking for what, ah, 
She made a mistake. Don't try that not. You've been caging people since. You can't cage me, oh. You can't cage me, oh. When I finished it, I came back home. I slept. Within half an hour, I was sleeping and waking up. God showed me something in the dream. He showed me a dream where I was standing by a big gate. I opened the gate. And as I opened the gate, there were lots of prisoners behind the gate. So as I opened up the gates, all of the prisoners started coming out of the gates. And I was telling them, come out, come out, come out. What happened was that those were all the people she had been caging. Those were all the people she had been caging. You see, you can be doing what you're doing. All it takes is one child of God. All it takes is one Christian that knows what they are doing. All it takes is somebody that is filled with the Holy Ghost. Pure. Tongue talking. I'm talking years ago. All it takes is one child of God that knows their rights. As I'm speaking to you today, I'm communicating your rights to you. So that you know what to do when the time comes. All it takes is one Christian to make a difference. They may have been doing what they are doing to your clothes, your essence, your pants, your bra, your scarf, your hair tie, your gilly, your belly, your bra. They may have been doing what they were doing to everybody else. But when it comes to your turn, ah, monkey go go market, you no go come back. They no go come back. You hear me, so? Learn. Let me give you another example. I guess if it, it's my job and the anointing that God has given me is to talk to men and women to let you know what will happen. To let you know how to anticipate so you won't be wounded and damaged in this life. So that they won't treat you anyhow. My God, the things that some people, some in boarding school, not if they did it in my own my own boarding school, I didn't share with them. Oh, some women share pant and bra. Some women can share everything. Some share comb, share cream. Some share husband. Some share pants, share bra. Stop it! Because the actual underwear some people are wearing is not of this world. It's from Marine Kingdom. Daddy Abraham Chibundu in a deliverance school said to us about three, four years ago, he said, when people came to see him for, for deliverance, as they sat down and it was getting to their turn in the queue, no problem. But when is the person's turn to go in to see him, the woman would just get up. What happened? Her jewelry disappeared. Her bra disappeared. Her pants disappeared. Why? They have gone back to the marine kingdom. Where they were from. So for all those people like that like to share things, like to share clothes, like to, I can do anything for you, but I will never share my clothes. No. Never. Never. I can do anything for you. But once in a while, I may be praying for somebody and God wants me to give them my talif. Let that, that's under instruction from the Holy Ghost. At this point, I want you to take a prayer point. Say anywhere by clothes are. Ah. Any man or woman that is using my clothes to tap into my virtue, to tap into my essence, to tap into my to tap into my wealth. Any child of the devil. Any trickster that is using my clothes to tap into my virtue. Ah! Hey! Say my clothes wherever you are, carry fire. Carry fire, burn that place down. Whoever is using my clothes to tap into my virtue. Whoever is using my clothes to tap into my glorious future. Sometimes they come to you. Oh, do you have scarf? Do you have shoe? Hey, I just want to borrow it, and they never return it back. There's fire on the mountain. Beware. 
Beware. Beware. If you dream of putting clothes on in the dream, it's a good omen. When you are putting on neat and bright colored clothes, it means there's success and prosperity ahead. If you dream and there's, you see yourself with large amounts of clothes, it means that God is going to give you power over difficult times, ahead, contentment, status. If you dream of putting your clothes on inside and out, back to front, it means that the enemy has concluded to turn your life upside down. If you are here and you have seen yourself wearing your clothes inside out, upside down, in the name of Jesus, I turn you upside up. Aya! I turn you upside up. Your life shall not be upside down in the name of Jesus. Whoever is here and you've dreamt and you saw yourself wearing your clothes inside out. I decree, I dip my tongue in the blood of Jesus. I decree that Satan is a liar. Hey! In the name of Jesus. When you see yourself naked without clothes in the dream, it means arrow of poverty, arrow of regret, arrow of disgrace and mistakes. Be delivered from that sighting in the name of Jesus. If you are here, you saw yourself naked in the dream. Don't worry. God shall put on the garment of prosperity, the garment of, 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 of celebration, when Joseph was pronounced Grand Vizier, one of the first things that happened was that his clothing was changed. You too shall be fit to stand before God in the name of Jesus. Look at the ministry of Joseph. Clothes of many colors. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. From that point, he was cast into a pit, became a prisoner, uniform inclined, clothing inclined. Potiphar's wife snatched his clothes. You can see the thread. In the same way that the, that the concept of water threaded its way through Moses' history, the concept of clothing that threaded itself through Joseph's history. He was made the grand vizier. His attire changed. Hallelujah. To undress in the dream. So you are wearing clothes and then you see yourself stripping yourself in the dream. Ah. It, it suggests a period of reverses are in the offing. Oh. In the name of Jesus, I cancel that any reverse that the enemy has projected against you. I cancel it. You dream and they are stealing your clothes. It means they want to attack your honor and your glory. Be prepared for mockery, for ridicule. Be prepared for demotion unless you cancel that dream. Unless you cancel that dream. Unless you cancel that dream. Look at the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. Clothing was also, the centrality of clothing was woven inside his own story. Jesus is a type of Joseph, or rather, Joseph is a type of Jesus. They cast lots for his clothing. The importance of clothes. When you're putting on tight and uncomfortable clothes in the dream, it suggests that you need to protect your reputation on romantic affairs. It means they're about to call you a shower or prostitute because of a certain loose behavior or something. Correct yourself immediately. If they give you the way your papa no call you, your mama no call you. Before they call you a shower, correct it. Not just women, men. So I've seen men with trousers so tight, the trousers are tears at the bottom or tears on the leg. Get in half, yo. Brother, try and not let that trouser be too tight. Oh? When you dream and you're putting on dull, rough, shabby, or soiled clothes, it means unrighteousness. Uncleanliness, warning against business dealings or warning against friends. 
let's look at what happened to Joshua the high priest. In the Bible, Joshua the high priest wore a garment, Zechariah. He wore a garment that was soiled. Satan stood at his side accusing him. What is Satan accusing you of in your life? What is Satan telling the whole world you did? What is the accuser of the brethren? See in Zechariah 3. Then he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to accuse him. The Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, Satan. Indeed, the Lord has chosen, who has chosen Jerusalem, rebuke you. Is this not a brand plucked from the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and standing before the angel, he spoke and he said to those who were standing before him, saying, Remove the filthy garments from him. Again he said to him, See, I have taken your iniquity away from you and will clothe you with festal robes. May God clothe you with festal robes in Jesus' name. May the filthy garment that the enemy wants to curse your life with be removed from you with alacrity in Jesus' name. May God himself put on you and put on me festal robes in Jesus' name. Clothes of pomp and of pageantry. Hallelujah. And he said, verse 5, uh, uh, Zechariah 3, 5, Then I said, let them put a clean turban on his head. Your head shall have a new decoration, new headpiece attributed to it in Jesus name then I said let them put a clean turban on his head so they put a clean turban on his head and clothed him with garments while the angel of the Lord was standing by Ah, may the angel of your blessing stand by the error propagated into your life is corrected in the mighty name of Jesus as you hear my voice I speak to your life, I speak to my life receive your new headpiece receive your new turban receive your new garment receive your new festal robes receive it, I receive my own, begin to receive your own receive your own festal robes receive your own garment of praise receive new clean garments receive perfumed garments I remove the soiled clothes of your past, soiled clothes of your father's house and mother's house Whatever declares you as unrighteous, unclean, I remove it off you in the name of Jesus. When you dream of attending an interview with dirty clothes, it suggests rejection, difficulties, and your career is under attack. We cancel if you're here and that's what you have seen in the dream, I cancel it in Jesus' name. When you dream of a cloth tied to your face, it means you're spiritually blind. Everybody here who has dreamt and there's something covering your eye. That spiritual blindness, I tear that thing that covers your face off. I tear it off you. You shall not be spiritually blind. I shall not be spiritually blind in the name of Jesus. When you are putting on a black cloth inside the dream, there's fire on the mountain. It denotes funeral, mourning, and sorrow in the orphan. Let the tempest of God blow away this the wind of sorrow away from you. Let the tempest of God blow it away. Let the tempest of God blow it away. When you dream of removing and burning any black cloth that you put on, it means you have victory over untimely death. You have victory over untimely death. Hallelujah. When you put on a red cloth, in the dream, it means there's danger ahead. Every danger in front of you, I cancel it with the blood of Jesus. Amen. When you put on a white cloth in the dream, it means peace, righteousness, and holiness. That shall be your portion and my portion in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let me give you another story. The story of my mother. And when she was almost bewitched with the uniform. My mother worked as a nurse. And in the hospital where she worked, she was the matron. Because we come from a particular tribe and the hospital where she worked in, there were people from another tribe that they made things a little difficult for her. Little, very difficult. 
they had tried all sorts of things, but they couldn't get her because my mother was very prayerful then. So what happened was that one of the other nurses who was contending with her for the matron position came, Nurse Kabiawu, and said, Sister, please borrow me that your uniform. I want to make one in exactly the same style because my mother always bought her, always bought her clothes, her uh, uniform from America or from the UK, then in Nigeria, as I recall. She never bought her uniform from Nigeria. It was always in, from America or the UK nice uniforms so my mother now lent her colleague the uniform for several weeks if not months the woman didn't bring it back eventually she brought it back when she brought it back she said to my mother oh yeah thank you very much i've made my own i've made my own this is your own i've made my own my mother took it she said thank you when my mother got home, she took the uniform, gave it to Ugochi, the house girl. And she said, Ugochi, Ugochi, go to Mrs. Shiroma. This is a white material I bought. Ask Mrs. Shiroma to make exactly the same uniform, exactly, to make it. Mrs. Shiroma did. My mother took the garment the one the new one that they made for her she wore it to the hospital they were in shock when they were when they saw her in hospital so they were waiting for her to fall down and die she didn't fall down she didn't die rather every other person who had planned that thing to get her to wear that satanic uniform they were all falling down and getting ill falling down and getting ill the owner of evil load carried their load in jesus name i decree and declare that you watching me in your life may the owner of evil load in your life and destiny carry that evil load in the name of Jesus. Any bewitchment that anybody has used your garment to prepare for you, let them carry the evil load on their head in the name of Jesus. I want you to declare that any power that is using your clothes to set trap for you, that power somersaults and dies in the name of Jesus. Say any power using my clothes to set trap for me, say somersault and die in the name of Jesus. Any power using my clothes to set trap for me, sometimes you have said you have given your clothes to people you ought not to give it to. Sometimes, as I give you that Sister Alice's story, you spread your clothes somewhere, you come out, it's not there again. What's going on? Sometimes it's people that come and actually steal your own clothes to perpetrate an evil. If you are watching me, I decree and declare, I dip my tongue in the blood of Jesus and I declare that whosoever where hand has joined hand together in wickedness, Concerning using your gold clothing, your garments to punish you, I say it will not work in Jesus' name. Your clothing represents your destiny. Your destiny shall not be vain, shall not be a vain experience. Hallelujah. Say any altar that is housing my clothes, I set you ablaze, burn to the ground. Burn to the ground in the name of Jesus, burn to the ground. Come on. Burn to the ground. In the name of Jesus, burn to the ground. Say, my father, my father, deliver my clothes and my garments, wherever they are. Every cloth I have that is not in my possession, my father, deliver it for me. Every clothing I have that is not in my possession, father, deliver it for me. Deliver my clothing, deliver my clothing. Whosoever has provoked my clothing on any satanic altar, Say in the name of Jesus, my Father, my Father. Say, destroy, nullify their bewitchment upon my garments, upon my clothing in Jesus' name. You know, when we have, there's some police dogs, they can track people. I mentioned this when we were doing the special session on uh, perfumes. And when you put, um, when you put, somebody's outfit under the nose of a dog the, no, the dog will start tracking the person some of you are here and they are using your clothes to track you in the spirit I say death to the tracker in the name of Jesus say it after me 
Say death to the tracker in the name of Jesus. Say any power assigned to use my clothes to punish me. I speak death to that power in the name of Jesus. I speak death to that power in the name of Jesus. I speak death to that power in the name of Jesus. Any power assigned to use my clothes to track me. Ah, say track yourself. Say trust the angels of the most high God begin to track the person. Angels of the most high God begin to pursue whoever is tracking me using my clothes. Whoever is tracking me using my clothes be blinded in the name of Jesus. Because if they don't have eyes to see, they cannot perpetrate their wickedness. Come on. Say my clothing, reject bewitchment, my gilly, reject bewitchment, my heart, reject bewitchment, my, my headgear, reject. Let me tell you another story. Again, that sister Alice, again, she had so many experiences in the mountain of fire. One day she was home. She had tied her headgear after church. She heard a knock on the door. Co, 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 co. She went to the door. As she went to the door, there was an Indian woman outside her door. The woman didn't say good morning, good afternoon, good night. The woman stretched her hand and said, give me your headgear. Give me your headgear. Sister Alice said that like a mumu, like somebody under the influence, which I, I guess she was under the influence. Somebody knocks on your door, you open. To have the audacity of knocking on your door, you need to know that that person has some power. Knocked on, 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 on Mommy Alice's door and, and said that um, she wanted her headgear. Sister Alice, and then Sister Alice took her hand to her head to remove the headgear to give to the woman. But as she did that, the Holy Ghost gummed her hand to her head. So Sister Alice could not remove the head tie again. So she was struggling. She was struggling. She was struggling. She could not remove her head tie to give to the woman. Then she started shouting. Then she realized, oh my God, who is this before me asking for my head here? Then she started shouting. She was bewitched. She started shouting, shouting, blood of Jesus. Blood. Then the woman ran away from her house run from a house what possessed a human if it was a human being what possessed somebody to come off the street and ask for somebody else's headgear some of you are here before you allow anybody to touch your head either to make your hair or to tie one of those lovely complicated gillies you better soak your head inside the blood of Jesus. Everybody grab your head. If you're watching this video right now, I want you to grab your head because we are going to pray a certain prayer point. You are going to say, my father, my father, deliver my head. Say with the blood of, I dip my entire head inside the pool of the blood of Jesus. I dip my entire head inside the pool of the blood of Jesus. Begin to dip your head inside the pool dip your head inside the pool dip your head inside the pool of the blood of jesus dip your head inside the pool of the blood of jesus on the double dip your head hallelujah dip your head inside the pool of the blood of jesus say any witchcraft animal tracking me using my clothes any child of the devil assigned to track me using my clothes any child of the devil assigned to and be women be mindful be, as i'm advising you i'm advising myself sometimes we know we have too many things on our plate but learn to move like a military when military move they don't move wastefully Every movement is precise. Every movement is precise. Learn to move economically. Learn to know where your things are all of the time. There's a woman I know, wherever she goes to, she must forget something. It's not of God. 
May God give you the grace not to forget your belongings anywhere, particularly in a house of the wrong sort. Say any attempt to bewitch me by, via my clothes, say die by fire. Any attempt to bewitch me via my clothes, die by fire. Any attempt to bewitch me via my clothes, die by fire. Any attempt to bewitch me via my clothes, die by fire. Any attempt to bewitch me using my clothes, die by fire. Any altar supporting my annihilation through my clothes. Say that altar I set you ablaze. I set you burn to ashes. Burn to the ground. Burn to ashes in Jesus' name. Any native doctor boasting of their juju against me using my clothing. Any native doctor boasting against me with juju. Any native doctor servicing their altar with my, with my dress. With my clothes, with my bags, my shoe, my belt, any power. Using my clothes against me, I command you to die by fire. Any juju totem. Any juju totem used in afflicting me, catch fire. Oh God. Any juju totem used in afflicting me, catch fire. In the name of Jesus. Say every juju they have used my cloth to tie and have assigned to punish me. Say that juju, I set you ablaze. I set you ablaze. Say I separate my soul from any power using my, 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 my material to pursue me. I separate my soul away from the, from the children of the devil. Separate them. Separate them. Separate them. Separate them. In the name of Jesus. We have come to the end of this session. It's 11.25. We started at 10. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. Begin to salute him and thank him for what he has done tonight. He has effected a strange deliverance. He has effected a worthy deliverance. He has effected a deliverance most worthy. He has effected a deliverance that nobody else could have done. He has effected a deliverance, a deliverance, a deliverance, a deliverance, a deli to the glory of God, to the shame of the devil. Our God has, uh, has effected a very deep deliverance. Begin to give him glory, begin to give him praise. Begin to give him glory, begin to give him praise. Our God is too much. Give him glory, give him praise. Our God is too much. Give him glory, give him praise. Hallelujah. Our God is, can do what no man can do. Give him glory, give him praise. That you are free and free indeed. Give him glory, give him praise. Salute him for a job well done. He's Jehovah most holy, most favorable, most lifted. Jehovah most wonderful. Hallelujah. Salute our Lord for he is faithful. Salute our God for there is none like him. Salute our God because he is the pillar that holds our life. Salute him because he, are not, he has not allowed our garments to be used against us. He has not allowed any covenant assigned against us to work against us. That covenant that depends on the instrumentality of the uniform to be made manifest, that covenant is shattered. That covenant is broken. That covenant is destroyed. In the name of Jesus, amen. Wherever you are, begin to thank God for what he has done. Come on. Begin to thank him for what he has done. Thank the glorious God, the faithful God. Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Elohi Elolam Hussein. God, I worship you. I bless you. I give you glory. I give you thanks. I celebrate you, Jesus. I celebrate you for what you are doing in the life of this ones. Thank you for this sheep you have given me, oh God. Bless every single one of them. Bless them indeed. Bless Dr. Jesus Ministries. That's it. Bless Dr. Jesus Ministries. Everybody begin to pray for Dr. Jesus Ministries. Begin to pray for Pastor Sandra Oba. That the gates of hell not prevail against me. The gates of hell are very angry. But I'm a soldier. No retreat, no surrender. Hallelujah. Having done all to stand, I will stand. My name is not Lot's wife. I will not look back. I say no turning back. Pray for Dr. Jesus Ministries in this hour. That the garment of glory, the garment of honor, 
the garment of restoration, the garment of open doors, the garment of praise is worn on us. And the garment of my Lord Jesus Christ settles on me. Come on, pray for Dr. Jesus' ministries. Ask for God to pour down his anointing, his grace. Ask for him to pour down his favor. Begin to receive the mantle of favor that, was, that is made possible by God. Salute this Jesus because he's too much. Salute him because he's too much. Salute him because there's none as holy as he is. Salute him, salute him, salute him, salute him, salute him. Our God can do all things. We have come against the spirit of wickedness made manifest in clothing. As you have prayed, you have rained judgment into the camp of the enemy. As you have prayed, so shall it be. As you have prayed, the enemies are disgraced back to hell fire. As, 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 as you have prayed, whatever should not be inside your house, God will reveal it to you. The revelation power to know what to do. When what to do matters the most, may you receive it in Jesus' name. Bless God who has done this. This is the second session of today. I've been praying together with you. The other one was over two hours as well. Near enough four hours today, I've prayed with you. Let's give God glory. Let's give him praise. It's not by my might, not by my power, but by the spirit of the living God. Many are called, few are chosen. I stood up and I, I was counted. I bless God. Ask God to fortify Dr. Jesus' ministry. Ask God to fortify me, the founder, the lead, and the host, and the visionary. A lot are not happy with this ministry, but they can go to blazes because the finger of God is here. I preach the word of God, not diluted. I preach the word of God, not compromised. I preach the word of God with my heart. Having done all to stand and I will stand. Now, you have come. You have drunk from the wells of this salvation. Salvation that pertains the deliverance of your garment. I need you to know that your garment must be maintained spotless. Your garment must be maintained clean. That your righteousness and holiness never be called into question. That the devil cannot arraign you before God and point accusing fingers to you as he did Zechariah. Our God knows all things. Our God sees all things. Our God is on your side. Hallelujah. Bless this Jesus. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. As we say the grace. Come on. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. And the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be and abide with us now and forevermore. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. For surely. God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Yes, Janice, you shall dwell in the house of the Lord. Patience, Isaac, you shall dwell in the, in the house of the Lord. Gabriela, you shall dwell in the house of the Lord. Chukuna and Nina, you shall dwell in the house of the Lord. Emma Mutewara, you shall dwell in the house of the Lord. Janice, Gwen Madu, you shall dwell in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Belinda Coleman, God bless you. God bless you, Chidema. God bless all of you watching. What see the Reverend Ronti Majakudumi? I'm grateful. Thank you, God, for what you have done today once more. Hallelujah. We are grateful, oh Jesus. That's it. Let's take the prayer. The grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with us all now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. For surely. God's goodness and mercy shall follow all of us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Thank you so much for trusting me with your time to your tent, O Israel. As we prepare to come back here tomorrow, tomorrow when we do come back is a very special session. Remember to pay a visit to my Facebook wall. Tomorrow is the last day of April. And on, uh, uh, in the night time, we are doing a command the, command the new week prayer session. We are going to pray for the new month. We've prayed for our seed this morning. Our God has delivered us from um, battles that started from the womb. Our God has delivered us from satanic articles of clothing. This is going to be quite a weekend. Those of you that get testimonies, I want you to let me know of the testimonies on the double. But we are coming back here tomorrow. Tomorrow is Sunday the 30th. We are coming back here at 10 p.m. It's my father, my father, deliver my hair. 
deliver my hair. My father, my father, deliver my hair and gates of May 2017. Open by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. I'll see you tomorrow, 10 p.m. Fast, fast from 12 midnight now until 2 p.m. tomorrow. Hallelujah. And then break it and then see you at 10. So we are doing two things again tomorrow night. Praying for the new month. And then my father, my father, deliver my hair. Your hair represents your glory. Your hair represents your star. Come and deliver it tomorrow. It will not be a plastic experience. And God shall be with us as we do. In the name of Jesus, amen. 10 p.m. UK. 10 p.m. UK. 10 p.m. UK. 10 p.m. UK. God bless all of you immensely. And I love you. I'm grateful. Thank you, Gabby, darling. Thank you, Fatma. Thank you, patient. Share the video. Share the video. Let everybody see it. Hallelujah. God bless you all immensely. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you. Remember, tomorrow, go to church. You must go to church. And when you go to church, take a tambourine, take a maraca, you know, go ready to jump up to Jesus. It's the last day of April. And we are entering into the month of grace, the month of May. I'm going to be making some prophetic declarations tomorrow. Don't miss it. 10 p.m. Dr. Jesus Facebook live session. I will be here. I want you to join me so we can pray our way and break down every satanic wall standing between us and the new month. Hallelujah. We've done that throughout this year and we shall carry on doing that. So come tomorrow 10 p.m. for a very powerful session and God shall hand over. Hallelujah. The keys of May 2017 over to us in Jesus name. God bless you. I'm so grateful. I'm so <laughs> you're blowing the shofar tomorrow, Gabriella. I want a shofar, you know. I want to go to Israel and get a big shofar. I've got a small shofar which I blow. When I blow my small shofar in churches, they all look at me like I've lost it. I've not lost it, lost it too. If you laugh at me when I blow my shofar, it means you're Mikhail. And you know what happened to Mikhail in the Bible. That's not our portion in Jesus' name. So God bless you. Hallelujah. Do a boogie for the Lord tomorrow. See you. And God bless. I love you all. Thank you.